Hey guys, welcome back. It's been a while since I've posted a video here on my channel, Wanderlusting Lawyer. Um, and you can also see I have new digs, I guess. I'm in France right now. I've been here for almost three weeks at a language school. I'm in Montpellier, which is a city in the south. I guess technically southeast of France, about a three hour train ride from Barcelona up the French coast. Um, so I've been studying my French here, which has served me well for about two days on the Camino. I'm starting in Saint-Jean. Um, but I am only about maybe five hours away from Saint-Jean by train. So I'll be doing that journey in exactly nine days from today, and then I'll start my Camino the next day. So I'm very excited. I'm also, as you can see, repping Pride Month. Happy Pride Month, everybody. I wish I could be there to celebrate with you guys. Love June. But uh, when I go to Amsterdam in August, I'll be able to go to Amsterdam Pride. So I'm excited about that. Um, also, I don't know if you can tell, I got pink tips before I left for my trip. I wish I'd done my video earlier so you guys could have seen how crazy it looked. Mostly kind of washed out now, but I still think it's pretty cool. I'm actually gonna get a drastic haircut before I start the Camino, still haven't figured out how, but I do not wanna be dealing with all this hair uh, in June and July in central Spain. So those are all news things coming up, but today I wanna make a video for you guys about the footwear that I'm planning to use on the Camino, because I know I think secondary to the backpack question, most people wonder, well, what kind of shoes, boots, sandals, etc. should I be bringing and wearing on the Camino? And obviously like backpacks, this is a super personal decision. Um, the best thing you can do is try on as many pairs of footwear as you can, and of course try them out on practice walks. I knew right away that I didn't wanna do um, boots, whether high or low boots, because one, I'm gonna be doing my Camino in summer, and they're just, I think would be too hot. Um, and two, I don't have any experience walking in boots. And I had, I heard stories from people that started off um, using boots that had not practiced with them before that developed tendonitis. So I think given the fact that there isn't too much uh, ascent and descent on the Camino compared to other hikes and walks, um, I decided from the beginning to go with a trail runner. I did try on um, Merrill and a lot of um, Solomon and a lot of those brands that I think are really well received. And um, I let, there were things I liked, things I didn't like. I found in general they were tended to be heavier and I don't know if it's true, but I've heard a pound on your feet is like five pounds on your back. So I didn't wanna do that. Um, and I tried on probably every brand out there in different trail runners. And there was one shoe that for me, I tried it on next to every other shoe that I was like, yeah, that kind of feels, that feels like it could be pretty comfortable for a 500 mile walk. Every time I put this shoe back on, uh, I was resold. And it makes sense because this is one of the shoes that I run in regularly. And so I actually, the shoe I decided to go with for my day to day is uh, the New Balance Vazi Summit V2 Trail Runner shoe. I have big feet. I actually had to go get the men's version. Um, I'm a size 11 women's. Uh, I would have, if I wanted to stay with the women's shoe, I would have had to get a size 12. That's pretty normal for me with my New Balance running shoes to go up a size. But my feet are also an inch. Uh, different in size and so I felt I was getting nervous about my right big toe my right foot is bigger and so I decided to try out the men's version um, and so I actually ended up ordering a size 11 in men's shoe which is embarrassing don't tell anybody but um, no I think this is going to be the best bet because um, in addition to this sh this shoe um, I tried on different soles for extra cushion, but all of them were too thick and I felt like we're again with two pairs of socks going to make my shoe too tight. So I settled on the Dr. Scholl heel cup insert. Um, I don't love the edge of it in, in the sense that I'm nervous that it'll, I'll be able to feel it and it'll annoy me, but then when I put on my pair of, I'll make a sock video after this, but when I put on my pair of liners and then hiking socks, I really couldn't feel the edge. So I feel like if anything, at least for days when I'm doing just longer distance or maybe just half the day, I'll put these in the shoe. So kind of just to tell you a little bit about the shoe itself, um, 
it's, so one of the things I liked about the shoe is it's super lightweight. Also, it's basically Pittsburgh sports colors and those are all my teams. Um, so I just think it's a really badass, excuse my French in France, looking shoe. Um, but I also liked the combo of there being some waterproofing elements to it. Like the texture here, from what I understand, is pretty good at um, keeping the shoe waterproof in a lot of the places you'd need it. But then it has these breathable Y-shaped cutouts to allow heat to disperse. And then this part of the shoe is all just breathable mesh. So it'll keep the toes cooler, I guess. It's gonna be summer. Um, but I really liked also this front tip. Not only is there uh, this piece right here, this entire front part is reinforced and so I don't anticipate having any toe stubbing problems. Um, as for the bottom, you can see I've been bad. I haven't done enough um, training for the Camino. I've been doing a lot, logging a lot of running miles just because I love running and I know I'm going to miss it when I'm on the Camino. But this week I'm going to get very serious um, and do some walks around uh, Montpellier. I also don't want to do too much. I just I think I'm physically fit to the point where I know it's going to be really difficult for the, at least the first week, but I'm ready to handle it. So I do need to break in the shoes some though, but I've been wearing them mostly around the house all day. So in that sense, I certainly have logged some miles on them, but just not really outdoor. But they're super flexible, um, which is good. But they also have, so these black cutouts, you can see kind of, it's a really hard, I think it's a super dense foam that creates what they call a rock plate so you don't actually feel all of the stones and rocks that you walk over. So that was one thing I knew I didn't want to lose even though I wasn't going to be using a boot was the protection on the bottom of my foot. But then you also can see that these multi-directional lugs are pretty substantial. Um, so they'll grip quite well, and they, this is what New Balance calls its hydrohesion rubber. I don't think you can see that, but it's meant to, it's designed to work really well, even in slippery, muddy conditions. And even uh, these um, lugs have tiny little grips and dots in them. So um, I'm, I was excited about that feature, and I thought that for the combination of everything in terms of the support of the shoe, the lightweight, aspect of it, um, the additional protection that it provides. And also, when you put on the shoe, um, it has like this, let me see if I can show this to you guys, this stretchy layer that connects the tongue to then the bottom of the shoe, and it creates a, like a glove light neoprene fit over your foot. So I just feel like the stability that provides and also the ability to lace up to here for A sense and D sense, I felt like I got more ankle support than I was expecting to out of just a pure trail runner. So um, one of the things I didn't really love is that it's black because I figure it'll trap, it'll absorb more sun. But at the end of the day with just how comfortable it felt and all the other features that I really liked, um, I was willing to risk it. So yeah, so I went with, I'll show you the other one. These are the Vazi Summit. Uh, V2 by New Balance and um, I will definitely report back maybe partway through the Camino and also at the end and how these worked out um, but I'm pretty excited about this shoe and I think it's gonna work out well but it's not the only shoe that I'm planning on wearing well I guess it's the only shoe I'm planning on wearing but I didn't just want to have one option just in case I ran into any problems um, or it was raining because like I said they're not fully waterproof uh, which I wanted for breathability, but if it rains, kind of out of luck. Um, so I showed you guys, if you saw my one of my backpack reviews, I showed you a pair of Keens that I had bought. I actually decided not to go with those Keens, but I'm staying with Keens. So before I was looking at the um, women's Newport H2s, but I actually went instead with the Venice uh, the Venice twos and I find that these do run true to size for me um, I'm size 11. I got these in size 11 and I think size 11 is gonna work really well One of the main reason there are two main reasons I guess maybe three that I went with the Venice 2 over the Newport H2 um, the Venice two, the Newport H2 had a I think in a more substantial front bumper I think it extended even farther 
but I don't think I'm gonna be wearing this shoe enough to justify um, the extra weight that that added. And I think there were other aspects of the shoe that made it, I'd say that the pair had to be at least a half pound heavier, the Newports than the Venices. Um, this one has more cutouts. So again, maybe pro provides a little bit less protection um, if rocks try to come in through the top but uh, provides more breathability, and I just like the way the, um, the Venices kind of sit across my foot. I found that the Newports had a strap, an extra strap here that felt like it would really rub against my foot. Um, but then I think the biggest thing for me is the fact that with these um, Venices, you can actually adjust the back. With the Newports, you slip them on, and I, uh, I felt like that created a tighter, contact point on my Achilles, but also they were just hard to get on and off. So that's not really my favorite. So yeah, I'm go, oh, and I like, I like the look of these better. I think they're more neutral. Um, some people like the wild colors and that's cool too. I kind of just wanted a really neutral looking sandal because well, I haven't decided if I think these are cute or ugly, but uh, I think at least with these colors, I feel a little bit more neutral about them at, from an aesthetic perspective. So those are the shoes that I'm going to use to uh, hike in. And I actually, my thought is when it's, if, it, if I know it's gonna be raining badly, I'm gonna use the Keens. And then I actually have a pair of waterproof, breathable socks that I'm planning on bringing. Um, I haven't tried them out yet, so that'll be interesting, but we'll see how that goes. So that's my plan for now. Um, so the other footwear I'm bringing is um, I wanted a pair of really comfortable sandals for nighttime that at the same time didn't look, um, well, weren't cheap and uncomfortable, but also have it had maybe a little bit of style to them because I will be spending multiple nights in places um, and going out in the town and I want to at least have some okay attractive footwear. I know that's not something everyone cares about, but for me it was just something if I could find it I wanted to. And I got super lucky. I found this pair of sandals by Sanuk. Sanuk, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's the brand that has the little smile right there. Um, and it uses the yoga mat padding, so they're super comfortable underfoot. And I think they're pretty cute and the colors match. <laughs> the pretty plain colors of the wardrobe I'm bringing, a lot of black, a lot of gray. So I was really, really excited to find these and they're very lightweight. I found these at DSW. The other two pairs of shoes I got on Amazon. Um, I'm always, I always prefer to support local vendors, um, but I just, the New Balance, I ordered a bunch of shoes on Amazon to figure out what fit and um, I didn't have time to look for Keens locally. So, uh, but these I found at DSW on clearance, so that was awesome. Um, and then I didn't want to use, I think these would be fine in the shower, but this is a question that I never, or this is something I never saw people talk about. They said they use the same sandals for their shower shoes and their night shoes, and I guess that makes sense if you're just hanging where you are, unless it's cold, so one, wouldn't your feet get cold because your sandals are wet, and two, if you want to go explore the town, I would think that walking in wet sandals would actually cause more blisters. So I found a guy on YouTube, uh, I think he had some a blog called CaminoBlog.com. Um, I think he was a Spanish guy, but it doesn't look like the blog is functional anymore. But he did a video about everything he brought on the Camino. And he talked about these, and I thought they sounded awesome. Um, so I actually ordered a pair. The brand is BF, BFFLZ. Um, and I can't remember. I got them on a different website, but if you look up this name, you'll find them. Um, so here's how they work. They're super thin and lightweight, still have a little bit of traction on the bottom and you kind of just make, um, yeah, shower sandals out of them. So, I, I, and I hope they dry quickly. They have an antimicrobial lining, uh, on the, on the insole. So, um, then when you need to pack them up, you just lay them flat and kind of stuff them anywhere in your bag. So I was very excited. Uh, that he found these and that I could found, find them through him. So yeah, if you guys have any questions about the actual, about more attributes about the footwear, feel free to ask. Um, once I do some of my practice stuff this week, I'll do some short updates about how that worked out. And then I will also have a sock video coming for you too because I tried on, I don't even know how many pairs of socks. Um, and I think I found a good combination 
for whatever the day calls for, so I will make a video for you on that. In the meantime, thanks for joining and I hope you're all well.